Matthew and I did this by ourselves, which was crazy. And the, the writers were gone. So like, this is, this also plays into the scheduling and the craziness of trying to get this done within the time frame that we had. And like, we lost all the writers and, and we still had, and, and they'd written 13, but not 12. And so I remember I wrote a script and I sent it to Matthew and he wrote all night, <laughs> which he can talk about. <laughs> and he, I got an email from him like at five in the morning saying, it's dusk, I've stopped, like, or dawn. And <laughs> he just says, here it is, I'm going to bed. And uh, just back and forth, did it all by ourselves. <laughs> Even like the music, uh, even writing a, writing a song for it. Well, I met a girl and then flew away on my big, big blue or red plane. And then I felt like, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I felt like we legitimately hated Sonny Bono by the end of this thing. <laughs> Jack Ainsley Marshall again. Must kill Sonny Bono. It's my life mission. He's right there. What are the chances? Like, I felt like. <laughs> All of the Sonny Bono writing was just from our hearts. You know, like, Sonny freaking Bono. Sonny freaking Bono. For the love of all that's holy, Sonny freaking Bono on my flight. So. Yeah, I could tell Jeff was not acting in several of those lines. <laughs> that makes two of us, and that's about it. <laughs> no. I hate Sonny Bono. We have an ensemble of characters, right? And I think that, that, that drives to our strengths a lot. It's just that you look a bit pale. I am pale because I am extremely German, well, almost too German. Because everyone had their joke, right? Every character had their running joke. We had a running joke for everyone, whether it's that one dude looks like Stephen Colbert or... Colbert Rapport. Fairy, Farrah Fawcett's Caitlin or... I remember when I was an angel screwed that up well it beats sleeping in a burning bed i guess or um you know sonny bono or or the you know the one lady's drunk all the time and i i am terrified of flying and this almost gets me through it i think she's oh, on to something I here we should drink Keep during these down. movies um and i think that those that really catered to us really well just that ensemble of people and and then we are treated to a close-up of Danny's package. Yeah, it was hard to take Robert Stack seriously. Like, his delivery is the same as his dry humor, so... Can I get you anything? Not right now. Not even a better role? Looking forward to your last trip as a working girl? Looking, looking forward to your first lawsuit? So, every time, I kept waiting for him to kind of punch up uh, some of his dry, dry delivery. We're still on the warranty. <laughs> Still warranty, what a dumbass. And then Farrah Fawcett was, uh, I think Shannon, you did the, uh, you would do anytime Farrah was on, on scene, you would do like a kind of a wispy voice for her, like, oh, is this my sweater type thing? Washing, washing, washing. Mm -hmm. May I have some water, please? Oh, yeah. Now, water, water. I'm sorry. Uh, what did you want again? Yeah. Ready? I'm a girl. Yeah. Wash, yeah. wash, wash. So I'm wearing this for real. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the one thing I couldn't believe and I didn't remember recording was the rape joke. And I was like, when I saw it, when I just watched it, I was like, mm -hmm. whoa. We Wait, are you that? talking about the Whistler's mother joke? Yeah. When you're on top, you can rake Whistler's mother in Macy's window at high noon to get away with it. Wait. Uh, unfortunately, we have no control over that because it's the actual movie. 
You can rape Whistler's mother in Macy's window at high noon and get away with it? <laughs> what? His agent had that analogy on deck for this occasion. That is totally insane. What I liked about it was it came back at the end where he's like, well, off to see Whistler's mother at the... Right. Well, off to find Whistler's mother and a Macy's. Uh, Gavin, who had the 70s Lincoln, and he was talking about this car he couldn't get rid of. Like, he's like, I keep, he inherited it. And he keeps saying, like, I keep trying to get rid of it and sell it. No one wants it. So uh, I, I was thinking, like, wait a minute. You have a 70s Lincoln? And then, of course, Matthew was the one who thought of the twist, mm -hmm. which was, yeah. what if it was an Abe Lincoln? <laughs> <laughs> See, did somebody order a funky president? Like a, an hilarious. actor, he hires himself out as a 70s Lincoln for some reason, yeah. And so everybody's on one track, and Dan, of course, is on another track altogether. And And you, the joke is funny, but it's like, when you think about it, at what point would that ever be needed? <laughs> <laughs> I, loved, I loved when he was talking to Vic's, Vicky and he's like, hey, foxy lady. This is the Cracker House. Hello, foxy lady. Um, <clears throat> who is this? Well, I am the president of Funk. I'm the president of funk. <laughs> uh, okay. Is anyone else there? Well, that would be a negative, sweet thing. You sound sexy. Hmm. I think he's that... Got his whole, I'm just imagining this whole branding he's got behind this. <laughs> so what's your deal? Give me six hours to chop down a tree, and I shall spend the first four sharpening the axe. Okay... I think in his mind he was FaceTiming her. Yeah. <laughs> yep. She's like, what? <laughs> What's your name, sugar? <clears throat> Must have been a dream. We'll I just never know. <laughs> Vicky has chosen her friends very poorly just because of how they all act when she's sick. Hey guys, you want to take this party over to Vicky's house? I always love to have a bunch of people over when I'm sick. Sure. Her delivery on that, don't call me back. You yeah. know, like mm -hmm. her delivery on that was perfect. Look, I'm totally sick. Don't stop calling me. Yeah. And of course, Dan took it the wrong way <laughs> in the exact right way. <laughs> well, Vicky said she's sick, but then she said, don't stop calling me. So, yeah. oh, don't stop calling her. I don't know. It was like, I think it's a hard line to deliver without yes. giving away the store. And she did a great job on that. Yeah. 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 Anyway, back to these guys. Come on. Come on, stop playing games. It, it was Shannon's first episode to really fully be the lead with all the oh, crazy. Yeah. I think these are cute. Also, chairs. I wonder what Jimmy is doing. Do you anything did you realize that when Shannon showed up, like the costume started to get crazy? Oh, it's all my <laughs> fault. <laughs> yeah, because this is the first one that there was like a theme. Ooh, that Abe Lincoln's one bad mom. Shut your mouth. I'm talking about Abe Lincoln. Damn right. One of my favorite lines in the whole thing is, and Dan shines as both characters when he plays both of the couple. Dear God. My heavens, Sonny freaking Bono. I'm we have to get off this plane right now. How do you freaking yeah. Bono? How do you freaking Bono? I'll be damned if I know who I am now. Sonny Bono, the most Sorry. annoying man on the face that of the planet. Stupid. Things were usually we would have a cool movie and then we'd figure out a plot to go with the movie. And this time we had this 70s theme and I'm like, great. Now we have to find a 70s movie. Um, I like blue. And that proved to be very difficult. 
I think that everyone on this plane has guest starred on the murder she brought, including myself. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and That's I don't hilarious. know if this is, that was Matthew's joke, Matthew. I don't know if you if you did that on purpose, but the, that guy, I looked it up because I was curious, was in the pilot for Murder, She Wrote. No. Yes. <laughs> Guys. That, that's pure luck. I had no idea. So I just, it was just me like, he looks like a Murder, She Wrote guy. And they all so do. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If row six rings me one more time, I'll just die. So Shannon, the thing I thought you were going to mention first off, and I was wrong, um, was talking about the Danny Partridge, and you had all these inappropriate jokes about Danny Partridge. <laughs> Millard Kensington, he's a kid about 13. Yeah, I do him. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just nonchalantly, yeah. yeah. I bite, I've had my shots. This is about to get weird. So why does the guy want to kill Sonny Bono? He feels like uh, Sonny Bono was responsible for his daughter's drug overdose, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. But these yeah. things just happen, man. What are you talking about? She was found dead in your bedroom. You'll have to be more specific. He man, just happened, it goes you know? on. He yeah, goes, on, man. goes on, man. Yeah, well, um, the beat goes on. Wait, you can just say the beat goes on at any point in a conversation? And that was another brilliant moment where Eclipse to Sonny Bono and his... The beat goes on? Let's just call him Phil Hopner. Agreed? The beat goes on? <laughs> <laughs> Hoping. Oh, so why does he have a hand grenade strapped to his head again? And fade the black. I loved Pete's dancing at the beginning. It was Oh, real- that was hilarious. Ew. I thought it was adorable. I love how he just doesn't pause at all. He just sees what's going on. I was like, oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Dance pod A. Oh, man. Eli's like, no. No." Yeah. Yeah, Eli just walks in and looks around and he's gone. So, like, you know, like, movies of the time, like, the disco music comes on, and everyone starts dancing, and then there's all these random people dancing, you know, in the in the room. And I wanted to do that, and we just didn't have any other people. I was like, oh. <laughs> I remember we recorded, like, Matthew in the corner, and it was like, well, there's only one person. Why would you? <laughs> <laughs> that is it! You had that bit where the clown pops up of the bomb. So I had to come here to the Island of Misfit B Actors. The Island of Misfit B Actors. <laughs> like, right. You couldn't oh, keep I it love together. That. You, couldn't, you couldn't keep together. Ah, that's worse than a bomb. That's way worse than a bomb. Everything about that scene, by the way, is amazing. Good thing I was already wearing the suit at the restaurant. Sure, they all laughed then. I was wearing this at the restaurant or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they all laughed then. <laughs> yeah. Come on in now, Mr. Devin. Watch out safe. for my crotch tongs. <laughs> Watch out for my crotch tongs. This was a That's terrible right. idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like everything about that was just great. I got the call in a motel room. Scared the hell out of me. Thought it was my wife. Oh, cheating on his wife is adorable. You you hit that voice though, Shannon. That yeah. the I have a Charlie in the box. I got <laughs> yeah. You did it perfectly. It was perfect. <laughs> so I had to come here to the island of misfit B actors. Dan's yeah. Dan's <laughs> Betty White style loving <laughs> joke was great. You look so tense. I'm perfectly all right. Would you like some straight up sexy Betty White style loving? Sexy Betty White style loving. <laughs> 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 I've made a horrible mistake. Now, yeah. I don't know how they really did it uh, when they had real dishes, 
But there's no way they would have just stacked a whole thing of dishes and put it into a shelf. Why would anyone steal a survey for? You don't want to know. Is that? Come on. How am I get these dishes thrown away? Hey, hey, um, hey, are you saying that things on this airplane this weren't real. accurate? <laughs> <laughs> Remember when planes were like this? Like, never ever? And the plane <laughs> keeps changing color? Is it just the, uh, the video quality? No, it's totally two different. Two different, yeah. Two, two different stock images of a, of a plane. That... And we are red on the ground, but blue in fly. As we fly low, so very low into the sky. They just had a plane on the ground, a plane on the in the air, and they were two, two radically different planes and didn't care. Beautiful red plane in the corner there. Nice shot. Matthew, I would, if, if I played the guitar, which I definitely don't, I would um, have uh, brought it to Comic-Cons with us to play Red and Blue. That's how good it was. But there's nothing you can do about it. Well, I met a girl and then flew away on my big, big blue or red plane. And there's nothing you can do about it, nothing you can do on my plane that's red or blue. That's, that's a good how song. Great that song was, <laughs> and it was so inappropriate. It was so completely inappropriate to what's going on. <laughs> it's so amazing. And there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do on my plane. It's red or blue. Um, I love the idea of him finally trying to woo a woman, and but his entire song is like justifying his behavior for the death of another woman. <laughs> well, the murder girl. And then flew away on my big, big blue or red plane. You know what I mean? Hell <laughs> song for you. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get away with murder. <laughs> my plane that's red or blue. Yeah. I love the speeches that I do as the pilot. And I and da Matthew definitely wrote these because one thing that about Matthew's writing that actually annoys me, no offense, sir, because it's so funny, but <laughs> he'll write long speeches. And I'm like, I can't put these in anywhere, dude. Like, the Remember, this is important. Smoke bomb doesn't matter. We've all left bombs. But the answer to what I'm asking. Hell, I've done it a hundred times. Thousands, maybe. Not just smoke bombs, sure but actual boomy type bombs. Addressed to Robert Davenport. Even tried a nuclear the bomb once just for kicks. I don't even Relax. know Robert Davenport. Yikes. Chuckles. Is he a friend of my father's? Something to beat the humdrum existence of clocking in okay. and clocking out. Punch the old time that. card of monotony yes, in this old empty beer can we call no. life. I noted that as one of as like a, a unique thing to this to this show was that we actually had those long monologues. Poor clumsy little Vera. You see, Karen, life is full of He's twists and turns, but mostly broccoli. Like Can't pay too much attention to the gummies of the world. Does that make sense? Somebody was smuggling. It might be my favorite because we wrote so much of it. Of course, we think this is funny. We did it. Right. <laughs> right. I'm all set. I just warped the world for. When I was rewatching it, I was laughing really. I was just yucking it up, laughing. I was like, well, yeah, I, it's, they're my jokes, of course. And I'm the happy hooker. Of <laughs> course, <laughs> <laughs> I think they're funny. Like, my kids were like, mm, no, dad. <laughs> Sonny Bono. Sonny freaking Bono. I think because for me, I sort of, um, forgot what I wrote so then I'm like I would say this here and then somebody says that and then I'm like ah that guy's hilarious you know? can I get anyone something juice peanuts koala bear weather balloon but I, one of them was great the guy's name was like Canyon Walker I think something like that and so he said that that was his Indian name and Wait, that's his Indian you know name it? because of that time he fell in a big pit and took like four no. days to get out no I don't know what a dope you know, and then like two scenes later the German guy walks in and does all the same stuff. That is the goofy Canyon Walker? The guy who fell in the pit and took like four days to get out. What a dope. I was like, that's hilarious to oh, me. Oh, is I that Canyon wrote, Walker? Wrote <laughs> <laughs> that is yes. hilarious. He fell into a giant ditch, took him four days to get out. What a joke. Yeah, well, um, the beat goes on. Oh, you have an affinity for older women? No. <laughs> Tell me the truth. You're irresistibly drawn to older women, right? Um, that makes absolutely no sense. One had that's that was right after one of my favorite lines, which was, you know, 
I don't bite. And he's and he says, you know, I've had my shots. Uh, did Bob Newhart's wife just hit on Danny Partridge? There is no God. That was the, <laughs> the alcoholic Mrs. Newhart. Uh, I love the, the ledge, by the way. The bit with the... Uh, so he's like, allegedly. In my alleged crime. You committed a crime on a ledge? Uh, no, a alleged crime, crime is not a crime on... Oh. Let's explain this a third time. I love ledges. A le <laughs> I went to a ledge once, and like you just won't stop talking about it. <laughs> there is a man that He's claims to be a, a ledge, but that's impossible mm. because a ledges are made of Gouda. By the uh, way, there's a joke where we say with Danny Partridge when he leaves and we're like, and he was never seen again, which is something we just say, but you really never see him again. Like he never yeah. comes back. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Not really. No, sir. Are we in a spaceship? You left us. I kept waiting for it to be awesome because it was, it had so many celebrities in it. May I have a window seat? Yes, of course, but at 36,000 feet, there really isn't much to see. I think he was hoping to look out the window and see God. Let him know he was on his way. I was going to take off, but I didn't want to do another plane joke. Man, they're, they are flying through these credits. Is that an airplane joke? No, I mean, they are winging past. Okay, okay, stop. <laughs> uh, but I felt like it was going to, like, it was all going to gel. It never really did. It kind of bounces along. The murders don't make sense. Like why the guy wrote the letter. That was out of the blue. I may have to kill you. Are, are you saying my I jokes are you. terminal? Doesn't make sense. It would have been so easy to get away with it if he hadn't, you know, been so bad at murdering people. And so nobody is remotely worried about the bodies. I think the sequel to this is called Murder on Flight 502 and a Half. This time there's not even a murder. And none of it made any sense at all. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it didn't. It really didn't. I I thought this was a non-smoking flight. And it, it gets into I, like an hour in before there's a murder. I get the feeling 50% of this movie is going to be stock airplane footage. And when he comes to get a glass of water from Farrah Fawcett and you think like, oh no, what's going to happen now? Water, please. Oh yeah. Now, water, water. I'm sorry. Uh, what did you want again? Is there a symptom of anything? No. It's just that you look a bit pale. I, You're like, okay, what's going to happen? And then nothing. He just goes back to his seat. I'm <laughs> like, pale because I'm extremely German. Almost coming. too German. If, if that is well, even possible. If among the passengers, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a great opportunity for something to happen. <laughs> Something that tricked us, that made sense, I don't know, but nothing. Wait, what? Well, thank God there's no need. Why are the skirts different colors? One is first class, like Granables. Yeah. Perhaps two German, <laughs> if, that is, if, yeah. if that is possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, either of you guys heard the one about the rabbi and the priest? We've heard it! I did like that we had a couple Ralph Bellamy... Uh, uh, jokes in there. Looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Bellamy was, uh, a lot of people like our generation know him from Trading Places as one of the yeah. brothers. Yeah. And he, in the 80s, he did a bunch of movies. But in the 1940s, as a young man, he uh, often was opposite Cary Grant in a ton of movies. Um, uh, so he was always kind of, Cary Grant was the cool one, and he was like the nerdy one that no one Everyone left for Cary Grant. Roll up a sleeve. Have they got oxygen? Oh, Cary Grant walks up and takes the doctor's place. Find his wife. That was the other thing is the the, the title, Matthew, because like all the Rabbit Ears episodes had like a twist in the title, you know, like Dick Tracy might be pregnant or, you know, Vicky's big charade or something. And this one, Matthew and I sat down and I was like, I'm just going to call it murder on flight 502. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Collegiate football jersey font. They mean business. I loved Vicky's ringtone for Dan. What? And I don't know why I didn't have the glue. And so when you see me walk in with the blue tape, I'm actually sticking it on with blue tape, like that, <laughs> that electrical tape, because I happen to have some of that around. So I rolled up two electrical tapes and I just had them <laughs> under here and I kept on sticking on. So when you see me going like this, 
and having the blue tape in my hand is because I'm physically putting it there. And I thought, you know, I better come in with the blue tape. That way if people see it underneath, it yeah. makes sense. <laughs> okay, so how do I look? Like a sleazy pervert. Bonus! <laughs> and I remember for the end, like speaking of live action, Phil was sitting there trying to memorize the, um, Oh yeah, uh, the uh, the speech, uh, uh, and so like we got to the time, and he's like, "I'm trying to memorize. I'm trying to memorize it." I'm like, "Phil, just bring your phone." So he's like reading it off his phone. It is all together fitting and proper that we should do this. We, we can dig it. It felt like an old, like an old comedy, like where uh, Shannon's Shannon's yelling at us, and we're just like. Don't you know that you are mocking one of the most respected American presidents of all time? Have you no pride? Have you no shame? And that was, was so the funny. best. So um, sorry, I lost my temper. I it's just like not like me to do that at all. Want to add anything? Yes. Don't eat batteries. <laughs> and that's something that carried through the entire rest of the show, right? The rest of the series is like, know. whenever you lose it, you, you apologize and explain, this is odd, that never happens. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys. I'm so sorry, you kind of freaked out earlier. It's just not like me to lose my temper. Leave it alone, leave it alone. I boop your nose and you, you ask me a question. I'm sure. <laughs> And then, what did you ask me? I forgot. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Shoot. What are you doing here? Which was Phil not wanting to eat the Funyun, and there being like the baby bag of Funyuns inside the big bag of Funyuns. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Why do I even bother? <laughs> it's like, that, that is the one time the one time I ever opened a bag and I think Jeff was like no that's the prop don't open it <laughs> but I think I'm the only one who ever ate Funyuns in the show is that correct? I know that Victoria ate them early on until she realized because she hated them she actually hated them and I would write in the script Victoria opens the Funyuns and eats the Funyuns and she would do it for she did it for a while until she realized that I was just doing it because I knew she hated them and then she stopped. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen this is your captain speaking. Since our plane is roughly five times the size of a normal plane we're out of fuel just a bit too soon. Smoke them if you got them. Uh, I remember finding them in props months later. That wasn't pleasant. Why would you know what, never mind. We had the regular Funyuns, but we also had the Flaming Hot Funyuns, which were truly disgusting. And then we <laughs> had the, um, the chili ones, which were actually okay. <clears throat> Damn right. Groovy. Uh, and I remember having so much fun recording this with, with you, Shannon, at the, at the end of the whole thing. Um, they said some line about them sharing a room or there was some line about the, and then they walk off and, and laughing and, and we start going, ha, 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 ha. What will people say? They'll say, they'll yeah. call us swingers. Then it turns into, ha, 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 <laughs> Kosher, sharing a room. Oh, we can get the best in every hotel in Europe. I ha I love the, the I love the uh, the reference to super zip codes. Slow down. I'm an airline pilot, and that was still too fast. By the time you are you saying letter, you received you a letter earlier than you were supposed 502. to? That makes what? no sense. Did they use some sort of super zip code? If I die. I love the transition from your your vision of the 70s Lincoln and, and me with the 70s Lincoln to Tom's. And you're like, it's weird. It starts out it starts out like kind of normal. Then I'm like washing the hood, and then all of a sudden I'm rubbing my rubbing the door handle.
And then I look in the bo- back and there's like this dead body. And you're like, okay, this is getting weird. And then it <laughs> zooms out and it's gone to Tom. And yeah. he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Going, but what if it was an Abe Lincoln? <laughs> like, <laughs> he just blew my brain. Like, <laughs> the whole point was to put the car in it. Yeah, I was like, what if it's yeah. not the car? Like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <it's> just... <laughs> Otto Grunewald lost his wife. She went into a maze and never came out. Damn case history. Nando Lamas stuff where you do you do his voices too by the way in this yeah. <laughs> and um but i was trying to explain to you who he was and you, you didn't know and you weren't getting it and finally i just said okay it's strong bad it's the email the email what what the email hey strong bad you like techno at all if you do what kind but i've never met the famous author before besides that weekend in hawaii i spent with orson wells it was so hot like a, the the fact that it was a huge ensemble cast where there was something wrong with everyone was yeah. just great. A uh, huge gift, really. A yeah. huge yeah. gift from the makers. Yeah. They always send me away. Maybe I do get in the way. Maybe I'm annoying. Maybe I'm, I'm too much. Maybe I fish for attention by Maybe saying I exactly the opposite of what I mean. You figured that out. Maybe no? we'll Not hang glide sure. together and find Not a pot of gold. In. Uh, it is. I think it might be my favorite episode of Rabbit Ears. I don't know if I say that on every one of these interviews, but I do because I keep then reliving it. But I really love this one a lot. I just felt like the energy was fantastic and comedy was great. <laughs> Billy fucking Bolo! Suck fucking Bolo! Why does nobody see him? <laughs> Billy fucking Bolo! I, I feel very, va- very fortunate. Uh, the 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 people that I was able to work with on this show, um, it was very unique and special. Yeah, um, yeah. If you go outside and, and Shannon, you're working at Cabrillo and stuff. I don't know about everybody else, but whenever I leave that bubble, whether it be the theater or or the show or whatever, I, I'm in shock that the rest of the world isn't like this. Um, it's like, oh my gosh, whoa, you know. Because uh, uh, it just, I think this is just so special, you know, everyone in yeah. And that was a moment. Well, I remember- yeah. Truly, I truly believe that, that um, I think we were spoiled and didn't know it, uh, how tight that group was and, and how talented that group was, and how I think, gracious uh, everybody was with the uh, with each other and making all this stuff happen. You know, the yeah. flexibility to do all that was, was uh, amazing. And yeah, I think we like, expect the rest of the world to be that way. And, you know, not always that way.